Grinder guy, let's not meet again. So this happened while I was still in St. Louis. I have since moved to Chicago. 2016 was a wild year for me, full of coming out of my shell and self-discovery. I found myself becoming more comfortable with using applications, such as Grindr and Scruff to meet men online, because I had social anxiety and I had trouble meeting them elsewhere. One night, I got a message from a seemingly average dude. He was very nice, super funny, was able to hold a conversation, and he was also not that bad looking, so I was intrigued and kept the conversation going. There were virtually no red flags about him, and I ended up exchanging numbers with him. We got the text thing, and after a week or so of solid conversations, we decided to meet up at a local cafe. I put on my best damn shirt, clean underwear, and hit the road. I'm excited. I was busy during the day, so we planned to meet at a local cafe around 8. He doesn't live in the city like I did, so he was unfamiliar with the area. When we met, I was immediately enamored by this guy. He was cute, he made me laugh, and surprise, he was who his photograph said he was. Nothing was strange about the guy. He was a fucking cutie pie, and I was digging him. And by the feel of things, he was digging me too, what a twist. At one point during the night, we were sharing memes with each other over the table. I showed him one of the funniest I have in my photos, and he nonchalantly grabs my phone from me to take a closer look. He starts swiping on my phone for a minute, and at this point, I didn't think anything of it, because I just assumed he was looking at other memes I had saved. No big deal. He gave me back my phone, and then proceeded to show me some memes on his phone this time. A man who has a folder of saved memes on his iPhone is a true godsend. Like, let me tell ya. A folder of memes. Anyways, the night goes on, and the cafe is closing, so we decide to leave. As we're walking out together, he asked if I wanted to still hang out. I still didn't feel comfortable letting him know where I lived just yet, so we just drove around the city and listening to music and talking, shit like that. It was again pretty normal, and we were just laughing and joking around. At one point in the night, he turns to me at a red light and asks, Do your roommates know you're on a date right now? I laughed at this and just said no. Why, are you gonna kill me? I have read way too many let's not meets, so that was my immediate reaction. He lightly just said, I would use him as an emergency backup if I were you. You're probably right, I shot back, and continued with the night. It was nearing midnight, and I had laundry to do the next day, so I mentioned that we should probably head home soon. He offered to drop me off at my house, but I just didn't want him to know where I lived just yet, so I asked if he could drop me off at the train station. He politely agreed. When I got home that night, I was totally thrilled with how things turned out. He was a total sweetheart, and I was really into him. I opened up our conversation to shoot a text when I noticed at the bottom of our conversation was a notification that said, You start sharing your location with today at time. I thought this was a little odd, since I never used the feature, but I thought maybe I did it by accident and just turned it off. I sent him a follow-up text saying it was I had a really great time and would love to meet him again, but he didn't respond. I just assumed that he was busy and started browsing Reddit like a senseless fuck I am. I woke up the next morning and prepared to do my chores, washing my bed sheets, buying groceries, going to therapy. The grocery store was my last stop, and as I was writing up all my necessities, guess who was also in the self-checkout? The guy. Wow, imagine that. He immediately comes over and strikes up a conversation with me. I thought this was odd, as he previously mentioned that he doesn't live in the city and isn't very familiar with it, but the conversation was harmless, so I let it slide. A few weeks go by, and the conversations dwindle, and we start to talk less and less. I'm used to this happening, I guess, so I just let it happen without pushing for answers. Eventually, we stop talking altogether. One night, I'm home alone sitting down watching cartoons when there's a knock at the door. It was late, so I didn't feel comfortable answering, so I just sat there for a moment hoping they just go away. They knocked again, more urgently this time. I peeked through the peephole and made out two figures. My heart immediately dropped as I recognized the creep in a hoodie. He had an extremely defined jaw, so I was able to immediately recognize him. 
I freaked the fuck out and called one of my roommates to come home and that it was urgent. When Andrew came home, he told me that he didn't see anybody near the apartment complex, so I calmed down a bit and explained the situation. It was also during this calming down period that I realized he had found out where I lived by the location sharing he turned on while we were at the cafe sharing memes. I didn't immediately turn it off when I got home, so he had plenty of time to figure out my coordinates, especially if he was watching the map immediately after he dropped me off at the train station. He never showed up again after this particular occurrence, and I never heard from him again either. I also noticed that our conversations disappeared from Grinder when I last checked, so I assumed he blocked me. I still have no idea what he was planning to do, but I assumed he was going to try to rob me. So, creepy guy from Grinder, let's not meet. Please don't show up in Chicago. Grinder Stalker. So about three years ago, I was 18 or so. I was using Grinder and someone messaged me. For convenience, this lovely gentleman shall be referred to as Rando. So we started talking, and we asked how we were and what we were up to. The usual conversation starters. Shortly after beginning the conversations, Rando began to sound rather depressing, bemoaning about his insecurities and how everyone hates him. Occasionally talking about how he should just kill himself. So, being the nice person that I am, I try something about him and I compliment on, try to, you know, make him feel better, that sort of thing. Or bring a smile at least, and that's where things began to get heavy. Rena began deflecting my compliments, calling me a liar, or a user, or saying I'm just trying to make fun of him. I try my best to reassure him that my compliments were genuine, because I hate seeing people depressed or down. It's just in my nature to bring joy to people. Now, I have been in his shoes before with a severe ins insecurity thing, so I know how he felt. After he finally began to believe that my compliments were real, he began to get very attached to me, started sending me over 20 messages at once, and if I didn't reply within 5 seconds, he starts to be like, oh, I guess you found someone better to talk to then. You're like all the rest. And it began to get frustrating at this point. Now, I could have just blocked him and saved me the headache, but I have anxiety, and I fear that he might turn on my door someday and do something drastic if I did block him. He also tried sending me nudes to grab my attention when I didn't reply, literally instantly to his messages, and it got worse and worse from here. Eventually, he told me he'll be in my town over the weekend and began to get very pushy about meeting up somewhere and doing object things. When I didn't reply, he flips out and starts finding me on different social medias to keep tabs on me, Facebook messages, friend requests, Instagram follows, etc. I went out on night with some friends of mine, at the time forgetting he was in the town over the weekend, and he saw me walking down the street and he ran up to me, bawling his eyes out about me, trying to avoid him, and he began begging for my phone number and house address, and whether he could join us on our night out, and we politely refused. He followed us further and tried forcing drinks in my hand when we got to the bar. Infuriated about how clingy he was just being, I went home just to realize he boarded the same bus as me and followed me back to my place before he finally disappeared. He started messaging me on Grindr about visiting me at home sometime or trying to find my friends to get my phone number. I finally snapped at this point and finally blocked him and I thought that was that. Only to discover the next day. He was trying to catfish me with my own pictures to try and get my attention and screaming to know why I blocked him. At this point, things got way too heavy and I deleted Grinder from my phone, changed my number and moved houses just to avoid him. This whole experience has really put me off dating people with severe insecurities out of fear that something like this will occur again and I've been trying to go against my nature to avoid complimenting people too much to avoid something like this happening again. Three years later, I haven't seen him since. So, Rando, let's not meet. <laughs>